My name is uh, Clancy O'Gara, and I'm actually here to pay, uh, pay tribute to, uh, to my father and to, uh, to Martin. Does anyone recognize that picture? How many people recognize that picture? Come on, this is gathering for Gardner. You have to recognize that picture. So um, that's from uh, Martin's sixth book of mathematical games. And um, in that book, he uh, actually uh, had an interview with uh, my fictitious father, the mathematical postman, uh, Patrick O'Gara. And that's what I'm going to be uh, talking about today. I'm going to be talking about um, I'm going to be talking about stamps. So um, before we do that, uh, there's a disclaimer. Um, so uh, you can see the, the young woman is in the restaurant, and he is saying, uh, to, her boyfriend is saying, yes, stamp collecting can be very rewarding. And her response is instantly, ah! And help, my, boy, my date is talking about stamps. And, and then you know, everyone in the restaurant uh, 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 consoles her. And uh, you know, the waiter tries to console the, the guy and says, well, you know, I collect bottle caps, so oh, shut up. So um, that's the disclaimer if, uh, about stamp collecting. So when, when Martin interviewed my, uh, my father, my father shared some stamps from his collection with him, shared this variety of stamps. Um, the most interesting one, in, in my opinion, is the Pythagorean uh, theorem stamp there. Um, and as you can see, most of the mathematics-related stamps in my father's collection were um, uh, 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 portraits. Um, today I'm going to share with you some stamps that have uh, a little bit more, more depth in them. So um, naturally, there's going to be 12 categories uh, of, of stamps. Um, I want to go through those quickly. Um, I'm going to share some stamps with you. Stamps and other philatelic items, by the way, from the fields of uh, topology, impossible figures, the golden ratio, and of course, it's closely related Fibonacci numbers, uh, geometry, Pythagorean theorem, icosahedrons, equations, complex numbers, and of course, the category that's probably the favorite of everyone, well, I haven't gotten there yet. Sorry, I'm, it's, it's G4, G12, isn't it? Not G4, G10. So I'm going to be doing matrices, magic squares. And the 12th category, which is everyone's favorite, is going to be some miscellaneous. Um, one thing I want to show you, this is an absolutely gorgeous equation here. This was a cancellation in honor of it's Schrodinger's equation. Um, there are tons and tons of math-like things out there if you collect physics on stamps. I am not going to be covering those today. These are going to be more closely related to just pure mathematics. So I'm um, going to start with topology and everyone's favorite topological uh, item, the Borromean rings. This stamp came out um, a few years ago uh, to, to honor the, the company Ricordi. They produce, they've been producing music for well over 100 years. And you can see there are the Borromean rings there. Uh, no two rings are linked pairwise, but they're all linked together. Uh, it also came out in a cancellation. You can see it uh, sort of faintly over there. That was a little earlier in 82. There are several stamps that have Mobius strips on them. These are just uh, two such examples. Um, but there are, some, uh, there are some other items. There's a Japanese postcard that had a, a Mobius strip on it. Uh, the World Congress of Superconductivity. In, uh, in 1988, used the Mobius strip in their special cancellation. And there's a couple of five-fold Mobius strips, one on a stamp, uh, one on a cancellation. All right, let's move to impossible figures. Uh, everyone knows that cube. This was for an Austrian, uh, internet, uh, an Austrian mathematical congress in 1981. Uh, Syria has used a triangle um, for uh, an annual fair that they, an, an annual exposition that they, that they do. In one year, they decided to make it the impossible triangle. Uh, Oskar Reutischfeld is probably um, uh, the iconic artist of impossible figures. Escher uh, borrowed a lot of his work. Um, and then some other uh, philatelic items, a couple of cancellation, uh, a cancellation in the upper left from Japan. That's the corner card of a postcard from Switzerland. And then we have a meter strip from, uh, from the Netherlands, all featuring impossible triangles. All right, moving on to the golden ratio. Uh, this is a great stamp for a Japanese, uh, commemorating the Japanese architects um, society. It shows you how you can draw a line with length golden ratio, starting with the unit square. So if you divide the square in half, the diagonal of that rectangle, so one side is a half, one side is, is one, so the diagonal is root five over two. And it shows you how you add a, a, a half plus root five over two, and you get the golden ratio. Um, a Swiss stamp from the, uh, from the 80s. 
shows the logarithmic spiral in the golden rectangle. And then uh, Italy uh, produced the stamp in the, the last few years um, because there was a compass produced in Italy that was supposed to very easily draw uh, things in, propor in proportion to the golden ratio. The International Year of Mathematics was back in 2000, and uh, Monaco produced a stamp that was just screaming the golden ratio. Um, there we go. And then from the same year for the International Year of Mathematics, um, a, a cancellation, again, illustrating that the regular pentagram has the golden ratio buried in it. Um, and then uh, Macau came out a few years ago with just a bunch of stamps in their science and technology series um, that has, uh, you know, rabbits showing you what the Fibonacci numbers are, uh, logarithmic spirals, golden ratio, so it's all over, all over the place. And so now we go to the Fibonacci numbers. Very recently, uh, Lichtenstein produced three stamps um, having to do with the Fibonacci numbers. So there you can see the Fibonacci numbers, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, et cetera. The second stamp in the series uh, makes the point of showing the ratio of consecutive Fibonacci numbers. So 2 to 1, 3 to 2, 5 to 3, 8 to 5, et cetera. And the farther out that you go, you approach the golden ratio. And then this is the golden ratio on the last stamp there. And by the way, there are two errors in that, uh, in that number. Um, Bulgaria came out with a tribute to Fibonacci. So there you can see Fibonacci. I'm sure we really have no idea what Fibonacci really looks like. But that's what the Bulgarians thought he looked like. And uh, there's, the, the, there's the golden rectangle. Uh, Going to geometry, a couple of uh, uh, dodecagons in honor of uh, G4, G12. Um, these were, uh, these were the, these regular polygons were used on the way to approximating pi. Um, another, uh, another, regular do do <laughs> another regular dodecagon was used by the, uh, the composer uh, Joseph uh, Hauer. Um, I don't know anything about music, but apparently he set up a 12-tone scale, and that's just showing all the, all the tones related to each other. And another uh, great geometric figure from the International, Mathematics, International Congress of Mathematicians uh, a few years ago, Germany put out this stamp on uh, squaring a rectangle. All right, we move to the Pythagorean theorem. Um, this was, a, a lot of Pythagorean theorem stamps are related to children, so this was a, a, an issue from Suriname. Um, San Marino honoring Pythagoras with the Pythagorean triangle there. Uh, we have, again, a, a Japanese stamp uh, honoring children and showing the Pythagorean triangle. And then uh, Macedonia, both with a stamp and a special cancellation showing the Pythagorean theorem. There are other uh, postmarks uh, showing the Pythagorean theorem. That one is from, from Greece. Uh, we have a nice proof of the Pythagorean theorem from uh, Swansea University and then also on this Japanese postcard in honor of the International Congress of Mathematicians in uh, 2002. There's a proof on the, uh, the, the, the upper right corner. Uh, icosahedrons, probably the best icosahedron stamp is this uh, stamp in honor of Euler. Uh, it shows the icosahedron along with Euler's famous formula relating the edges and the vertices and the faces. It turns out the icosahedron has been used, I'm not quite sure why, but it is apparently the shape that viruses tend to, to take on, and it's actually been used in, uh, in, in commemorating sort of vi con virus congresses, virus congresses. Um, here's one where they couldn't quite manage to get it on the stamp, so they had to put it in the selvage on the sheet. Um, here's an interesting meter cancellation where the virus is meeting the viral medicine, Zovirax. Um, this was another commemoration of, uh, of a Nobel Prize in virology, and it shows the icosahedron. Um, this is a, a first day cover for the, the Technion in Israel, and why are they just throwing these icosahedrons around? Well, it's because one of their, one of their own had won a Nobel Prize in that area, um, and he's holding a, an icosahedral model there. And then the last icosahedron, again, we go to the selvage. This was uh, c commemorating... Um, uh, um, uh, Yamnitzer, who was a, a famous goldsmith, and uh, he did all sorts of platonic solids, um, stellated platonic solids, etc. cetera. Uh, on equations, we go to, uh, we see one of the more famous equations, Fermat's last theorem. Um, we have the divergence theorem, both, uh, both in a cancellation and on, a, on an envelope. 
Um, there's a, an equation there. I have no idea what it is, but it looks pretty cool, so I figured I'd throw it on there. I think it may have something to do with probability. Complex numbers, Gaussian plane, Cauchy's equation. That stamp is from 1957. It's a little too old for this talk, but there's that a great equation on the, the upper left relating the sines and, and cosines to E. We saw this stamp yesterday. Um, it shows quaternions. Uh, Ireland put out another stamp about quaternions. Um, matrices, symmetric matrix, um, Onsager re reciprocity relations in chemistry. Um, here's a, a cancellation of a, of a unitary matrix. Uh, each of the vectors is a, of unit length, and uh, its inverse is its transpose, and that's how you can figure out how to, uh, how to do a, a, a four by four determinant on this Japanese stamp. Um, I'm gonna just zip through these magic squares really quickly. Um, I don't know why they decided to leave those three at, on the bottom. The values of those uh, nine stamps, by the way, form a magic square. Um, those three stamps came back the following year, so uh, not sure why. Uh, the, uh, the upper right magic square is a Knight's Tour magic square, um, and now miscellaneous. Uh, Piet Hines' famous uh, um, uh, super ellipsoid. Um, then we have uh, 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 the graph of the logarithm, logarithm function, um, the, a, a limit approaching E, and uh, 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 Leibniz uh, his, his, uh, showing binary numbers. Um, as a bonus, these stamps are coming out this year. The one on the left has already been issued. The one on the right is coming. I have hit my time. If anyone is interested, the Mathematical Study Unit of the American Topical Association, you want to join them, get their quarterly journal, uh, Philomath. Uh, my gift is a paper on philatelic 12s for G4, G12. Thank you very much. I apologize for going over time. <laughs>